this is Aaron from GameEnthus.com doing a preview for Our Family Plays Games. This video was sponsored by Counter Move Games, whose game will be coming to Kickstarter shortly. And now here's Starla with an overview of the game. Agronomy is the deck building game that combines the reality of life on a farm with real world economics. Every round, players take their turns simultaneously and reveal their hands to determine the market value of each crop. Investing in equipment cards will either increase the quantity of your crops or decrease the cost of purchasing additional crops. Market cards will directly affect the value of your crops and in some cases, your opponents. Research cards will either disrupt your opponent's gameplay or enhance your own. Each player has a common goal of being the first to reach $60, but every dollar spent takes you further away from goal. So invest wisely. Okay, so in agronomy, you are a farmer, primarily a wheat farmer, and you're struggling. And you are a modern farmer, so you're struggling with all the things that people who are in the farming industry can struggle with. One of them is competition. Because while you're experimenting with growing other things like quinoa or barley, corn, etc., your competition is doing the exact same thing. So you're all sort of growing the same things, competing against each other, which can be difficult. So you're gonna to need to employ certain resources and countermeasures in order to make sure that you can make a profit. Agronomy is a deck building game and you're, that deck is gonna consist primarily, initially, of wheat and a whole lot of wheat at that. You're gonna start off with a, a deck of 10 cards and eight of them are gonna be wheat and the other two are gonna be comprised of anything between rice, corn, oats, quinoa, and barley. Those cards are gonna kind of be mixed up and then each player will get two. So your hand might have eight wheat and then you might have oats and corn. So at the beginning of the game, you definitely feel like you're in good company with your competition as you all pretty much have the same thing with some slight variations. So you start to mix your deck up and do something a little bit different from each other. Maybe taking a slightly different approach or a different strategy in order to try to make more money. Ground me being pretty much grounded in reality, most of the artwork looks like real depictions of the things that they're trying to depict. With the exception of quinoa, I guess I didn't know what quinoa looked like before it got to my plate or my bowl, but all the art depicts exactly what you think it's supposed to be. Commercials have like a billboard on a water tower, contracts that we have like a thresher in the background and it says the word contracts. Uh, so corporate espionage has someone breaking into someone's office in the dark, looking at their very brightly lit laptop screen. In terms of the gameplay experience, every player is gonna have eight wheat in their hand with two other cars or any combination of corn, kiwa, rice, barley, or oats. And from there, you are going to be laying out your cards and the actual value of the crops you have are determined by how much everyone has, how much there is for sale. Of the box says the game is playable from four to nine players, there are actually a two and three player variant in the back of the rule book. But the market value is really what dictates how much money you're gonna make. So the more of something there is, unfortunately, the less it's going to sell for. When it comes to this chart, uh, one player, or you can alternate and do it how you want to, but I believe the rules say the starting player or one designated player would announce each crop. Everybody raises their hand and says how many they have, you add them up. And then using the chart, you would figure out how much is worth. And then that's how much money everybody would get. And you go through each crop of, you know, wheat, rice, corn, oats, quinoa, and barley. And you would go through each one rounding up, I believe. So because some are worth a quarter of a dollar, some are worth a quarter of a dollar, some are worth half a dollar, you always would round up to the nearest dollar. So you add them all up and then you get all your money. So if you thought maybe you were the only one who had rice, you found that you were not the only one who had rice, you're a little bit disappointed, but that's okay. Wheat cards can be bought for a single dollar during the buying phase. So there's gonna be a lot of wheat in the game. And you don't really want your deck to be clogged up with a whole lot of wheat. You also don't want your deck clogged up with a whole lot of any particular thing. If you're the only one selling corn, that corn's gonna be worth a lot more money. If you're the only one selling quinoa, it's gonna be worth a lot more money. And you're gonna want that. That's gonna help you. 
What was also going to help you are the resource cards. So there's nine of them. There's a set that the rules suggest that you start the game off with. And it was very helpful in easing everybody into playing. Because the first time I played the game, I believe we played with six players. Five or six players. And we had a really good time. Uh, we all really started utilizing these cards. Another part of the game in terms of your deck management is when you actually deal out your five cards, a card like the commercial card will increase the value of the crop that's to the left of it. So the order in which you place your cards also makes a difference. You also do all these things simultaneously. You can't wait to see how much wheat someone has or rice or what have you and then put your hand out. Everybody plays their cards out at the exact same time. I used the agronomist a lot in the first couple of games I played where the agronomist allows you to take two crop cards, put them on top of your deck, on top of your draw deck. So you know they're gonna be coming out in the next turn. It also lab labels you to take the agronomist itself or any other resource card, just one, and put it back on top. So if you've been utilizing the warehouse to defend from people using bio crops against you, you can protect yourself by having a warehouse. There's all types of ways that you can sort of defend and deflect things that your opponents are gonna be doing. The game can get into some pretty interesting take that. I was often the target of the corporate espionage car, which basically allows someone to steal a crop from you. And when you don't have a whole lot at the beginning of the game, it really hurts. The nice thing is only one person can steal from you, I believe, in that particular round or can steal that one crop. Ouch. The resource cards really, you have to really start to understand what they do and how they work. And there's a lot of them, like there's nine they recommend, but there's even more that you can put into the game and do a whole lot more. If you want to get even crazy with it, you can even use locusts and really start to clog up your deck. There's a whole myriad of things you can do to switch the game up and make it more challenging. And when someone does hit $60, that does trigger the end of the game. And whoever has the most money wins the game. So that's a little bit about agronomy, which is a very interesting deck builder that has a realistic twist. You're not casting spells, you're not battling anybody, but you definitely feel the competition to make sure and incentivize you to build a really strong deck to make sure you're earning money almost every single round and making a decision on whether to keep that money or invest it in more resources or more crops. That's agronomy. I had a lot of fun playing. It's a very fun deck builder, but don't take my word for it. Check it out for yourself and see if your family or game group would enjoy it. Again, this is Aaron for Our Family Plays Games. If you wish to see more of me, you can find me at OFPG Voices and at GameEnthus.com. Thank you for watching.